The oldest is 14, the youngest just one. Their father is dead. They are destitute. And their mother is desperate. We first found her at the local market. Her children laid out like goods for sale. Some breaking news and the World Health Organization has just released a report estimating that 15 million deaths occurred globally due to the pandemic. The Kardashians are unfortunately some of the best known people on the planet. They promote themselves as hardworking individuals who are givers, who love their fans, and who think family and positivity is at the center of everything they do. Today, we're going to uncover how that couldn't be further from the truth, because what really is at the heart of the Kardashian-Jenner family is shady business practices and seen their audience and fans as nothing more than an ATM machine they can scam. They treat their employees like dirt by paying them such low wages that people have to call out sick from work because they can't afford to put gas in their car. On top of all of this, the Kardashians are heavily manipulating the media and promoting an unhealthy obsession with appearance. They're pushing an unattainable image of the perfect female body and beauty that they themselves have not attained but have created the illusion that they have. The Kardashians tell young girls and women that by buying their products and following what they do on their expensive to purchase social media apps, that these young women can also obtain the perfect body and look. But what the Kardashians have left out is that their look comes from enormous wealth, aesthetic procedures, high-end products, and in reality, they don't even look like they do in magazines and on social media. Because all of their images go through an extensive amount of airbrushing and photoshopping by an entire team of people and they also coordinate and control every image that is released including paparazzi shots. If an image somehow makes it into circulation that the Kardashians did not approve, they use their enormous wealth, power, and a team of people to officially scrub the image from the internet. Today, we'll be breaking down the extensive Kardashian empire that is built on trash, fraudulent products, audience manipulation, exploited labor, and scamming their combined 1.4 billion followers on Instagram and we'll also be looking at how their carefully curated image is nothing more than a performance and dressed up lies. The first Kardashian product that I wanted to talk about is Fit Tea and the Kardashians aren't the only people that promote Fit Tea. This is very popular for reality TV stars and especially people who've gone on TLC, 90 Day, people especially promote this one. And the entirety of Fit Tea is a scam. They pitch it as this detox and there's really no such thing as detox outside of what happens in your liver and kidneys. And if you have a liver and kidneys, then you don't need to buy detox. Your body is doing the detoxing. It's all just marketing fluff. It doesn't really mean anything. Every credible doctor in the world will tell you not only is there no such thing as a detox, this tea certainly isn't it. Detoxing your system and other marketing language like bloating and support your metabolism are all false claims. And going to the bathroom is a normal bodily function. It's not detoxification. I get so angry when I see these mega companies who are making billions of dollars prey on the insecurities of young people, promise them nonsense, miraculous, snake oil-like shortcuts to lose weight, to look better, to have better skin and nails. It truly does upset me. Businesses should not make money at the expense of others like some of these companies are doing today. Boy, are these companies geniuses. They take a term like detox, which has a, a buzz sensation, which triggers in our minds as something positive, getting rid of toxins. The only thing that removes toxins from your body are your own organs, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, amongst others. Supplements that you're gonna take are not gonna detox anything. That doesn't need to happen. You're I've actually had loads of these companies reach out to me before, not on this channel, on my main channel, because I lost about 250 pounds and I posted my before and after pictures on my Instagram and some of these companies wanted to use my image or have me say that this product helped me in my weight loss, but 
of course, that's not the truth. Fit tea is basically some very expensive laxatives with a bit of caffeine. And if I gave you laxatives and caffeine for two weeks, you would get the same effects that you got from fit tea. That is to say, you'd just be in the bathroom a lot. That's pretty much it. And any sort of feeling that you get, like your jeans are fitting a bit better, it's because you're dehydrated because you've been going to the bathroom so much. And the second that you start drinking water again and you're not dehydrated, you'll put that lost weight straight back on. There's also a ton of side effects and possible interactions with these fit teas and they're constantly reaching out to doctor influencers also to try and get their recommendation but obviously they know better than anyone that it's a load of rubbish but the kardashians don't care about any of this because they get paid upwards of two hundred thousand dollars every time they post fit tea on their instagram if you are blessed like i am blessed have a following on social media and you're labeled an influencer that means people look up to you that means people care what you have to say so take this opportunity to be a role model yes we want to make money and it's good to make money it's good to be financially independent and successful but don't do it at the expense of hurting others don't do it at the expense of fueling eating disorders Jamila Jamil has it right. We should not be celebrating celebrities who are taking advantage of the system to make a quick buck at the expense of children. I never like to directly criticize anybody on my YouTube channel, but there was a quote that I recently read from Kim Kardashian saying how selling these types of supplements is an easy way to make money, and because of that, she has more time to spend with her kids. I find that quote reprehensible. They don't use this product, they don't think this product works, they just see the money in the bank account and that means they're going to post it and hope you spend your money on it. What's even wilder about the Kardashians is they're already rich. They don't need to push fit tea, they'd still be rich without it, but they just don't care that much that it's one of the many companies that they sold their integrity for. They've also done this with numerous other weight loss products that don't work. There's some appetite suppressant lollipops that Kim posted on her Instagram. And they did this a long time ago in kind of the earlier days of their career with a product called Quick Trim. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Along the same vein as Fit Tea is Quick Trim. And this was a product that was around in the kind of mid 2000s. I'm pretty sure they were capitalizing off one of the early 2000 products, which was called Trim Spa, which had Anna Nicole, who was a big entertainer, actress, personality, and she lost a lot of weight through Trim Spa. And I think that they were kind of using the trim to kind of hopefully think that people were confusing the two and buying Quick Trim. So all of the sisters endorsed this and they all said they lost weight from it, but it's another product that's pretty much just caffeine. I don't think any of them use this product and any weight loss would be attributed to their massive team of private chefs and personal trainers. And a lot of people want something like this. They want a quick fix. Like ever since I've lost loads of weight, people ask me like, oh, what did you do? Because they they want that quick answer that they can go and do it. And unfortunately, the only thing that works is calorie deficit. You don't even have to work out. Just eat a calorie deficit and you'll lose weight too. Don't buy any of these trash products. Speaking of trash weight loss products, next up we have Shape Ups by Sketch and also the waist trainers that the Kardashians swear by. The Skecher Shape Up situation is very similar to Quick Trim. It was a gimmick of a product that the Kardashians would never in a million years use themselves and knew it didn't work, but they were fine peddling it to their young audience for an enormous fee. Again, this was a family activity. They were all involved 
And in the end, there was another lawsuit, this time for $40 million. And over half a million refund checks were sent out as it was proven that the shoes did not work. And they actually found out that people who bought the shoes actually put on weight. Now, according to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, Skechers has been acting kind of a little sketchy. The FTC says the company has agreed to pay a whopping $40 million fine to settle complaints about the sneaker line, specifically, quote, unfounded claims that shape-ups would help people lose weight and strengthen and tone their buttocks. And when it came to buttocks, Skechers reached for the stars. I don't really know how to say this, other than to just say it. You're amazing. The best I've ever had. I'm sorry, I think that's the beginning of the Kim Kardashian sex tape, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not? Oh, that's the actual ad she did for Skechers? All right, fine, let's take another look. But things just aren't working out. Well, that's not completely true. I am working out. It's not someone else. It's something else. Bye-bye, trainer. Hello, Shape Ups. Nice shoes. So Kim Kardashian didn't add for Skechers Shape Ups, but know the company could not back up the implication that by wearing the sneakers, you build your own pair of the world's most famous buns. Another product the Kardashians all pitch on their Instagram are waist trainers, which is just something that does not work and can actually cause injury. Kim has been quoted as saying she gives this to all of her friends after they've had a baby, which is this really what we should be giving women after they've just created an entire human? Women have enough issues with body dysmorphia to begin with. Then add in this whole getting your body back after pregnancy. Women aren't elastic bands. They don't just snap back into shape. And by putting stuff like this in the media, it's sending the wrong message. We'll talk later in the video about plastic surgery and aesthetic procedures, which is what's going on, not trim spa and waist trainers, but we'll talk about that later. And next up, we're gonna talk about the Kardashian card. Yes, they had a credit card. The Kardashian card came out in 2010. It is one of the worst credit cards, probably the worst one I've ever seen. The fees were absolutely astronomical and there was a fee for everything. You couldn't even check your balance. You couldn't pay a bill. You couldn't take out money. You couldn't activate the card without paying a very high fee. In 2010, they launched the Kardashian card. The worst offender may be the new Kardashian card. It's marketed to teenage girls, selling the idea that now their fans can try to be rich and famous just like them. Just weeks after launching the dodgy credit card, it was canceled because of all the controversy. Customers and fans were scammed by the excessive predatory fees they tried to hide. These hidden fees included $100 annual fees and so much more. It actually was a prepaid card, a debit card, not a credit card credit card and it was targeted at kids obviously it costs between 60 to 100 dollars to run it you also need to pay a monthly fee of 48 dollars and god forbid you want to use the card or even look at your information because the charges get crazier if you want to check your balance it's a dollar withdraw money it's a dollar 50 account transfer a dollar load money onto your card, a dollar. And if it was ever too much and you wanted to cancel the card, not so fast, you need to mail them a check for $6. Direct debit transactions were $2.50 and to speak to customer service, that was $1.50, please. There was also a surcharge of 2.5% of whatever the transaction was. So every $100, you were paying them another $2.50. Thankfully, only about 250 people signed up for this card and there was immediately a big amount of backlash. So they canceled the card and shut down the project quickly after it opened. Next up, we're gonna talk about one of the odder Kardashian endeavors and that is the church that Kris Jenner founded and I use church loosely. It really seems as though it's kind of a little Kardashian tax haven. Life Change Community Church was the original name of Chris Jenner's church and it was changed to California Community Church. They changed the name after they failed to pay their taxes so they needed to rebrand the church. The church is led by disgraced pastor Brad Johnson 
and the church practices tithing. A tithe is a portion of your income that you give as an offering to a local church, usually 10%. Members of this church have to pay a thousand dollars a month to remain a member and they're also expected to donate 10% of their income. The Kardashians seem to use this church as a way to write off their donations and the money goes back around to Chris. Running this church doesn't seem to use a lot of money. They have a very, very small office and they don't even have anywhere that they hold their congregations. It's basically that they rent out a hotel and that's where the service is. So where is all this money going? Because there's some very wealthy people that worship there. And Kim says that they all donate 10% of their income, which is a huge amount of money, but it's all going into the church and surely being funneled back into Kris Jenner's pocket. Though the Kardashian families and the church's tax records are both private, the company that Kim used for charitable donations in 2012 has public records. They showed that despite a surface promise to donate proceeds from an eBay auction of old clothes to charity, Kim used fine print to deflect the total she would actually donate. Of the 399,500 the auction raised, only 19,900 75, exactly 5% went to the charity, and the charity was the church that her mother owns. Not only that, but members are paying $1,000 a month to be members, and it's unclear where that money goes, and a lot of people have theorized that it goes right back into the Jenner Kardashians' pockets. Brad Johnson, the pastor, was working at Starbucks when Kris Jenner found him, and he'd left his previous church after a huge cheating scandal with his wife and some other unsavory acts that he was basically kicked out of his last church. There's also some very sketchy situations because a lot of the time that the Kardashians write off money or say that they're donating to charity, they're actually donating to their mother's church. And there was a situation where Kim was auctioning off a big portion of her clothes and saying that the money was all going to charity but in reality only five percent of the proceeds raised went to a charity and it went to her mother's church next up is another chris jenner special and that is the school that she's involved with legacy legacy business school is run out of trump tower and the fees for the school are over a hundred thousand dollars a year year. But the thing is, this school isn't real. It's not accredited. You just get a certificate at the end that I could have made on Microsoft Paint. The school pitches that the first 100 students accepted and enrolled and who pay the 105000 per year fee will get a chance to sit down for an exclusive dinner with the school's public face and chairman of the board, Chris Jenner. Passion is what keeps us up at night. The impact we want to make, now that's what guides us to our success. Your future is waiting. What is your legacy? A Daily Beast investigation has revealed claims by the New York State Education Department that the school is actually the rebranded European School of Economics, a for-profit organization that has been sued a dozen times in the US alone since 2006 for failing to make good on their debts and one that the department has been trying for years to stop from operating without legal approval. A certificate that means absolutely nothing. This is not an accredited college, not an accredited school, or whatever you get at this school will not be transferred to an actual legitimate college. Before we go into the bigger ventures like Kylie Cosmetics, Good American, the Pepsi controversy, tequila, and all the other ones. Let's talk about some of the not necessarily scams, but just very sketchy behavior. We'll talk more about this later too, but the Kardashians and Jenners, they have these businesses or companies or products that they claim are theirs, but they're not. They've just slapped their faces on it and promote it through social media. Because if you have $100,000 for your marketing campaign, are you going to take the chance and spend a little on TV, a little in magazines, maybe put some social media ads out there, or is it 
better to give that 100,000 to an influencer and get them to post to their large audience and hey, give them a seat on the board and maybe give them a little equity in the company, then they're driven to want to get people to buy the product as well. And by putting that one post for $100,000 and they're putting it up to these huge audiences, someone like Kim Kardashian, who has 319 million followers, if even 1% of her audience buy the product, that's still over 300 million people. So you see a lot of these new brands where they will just go to influencers and that is their marketing. They don't go through any of the traditional marketing forums anymore. I say all that because we're gonna talk about Kylie and Kendall literally just slapping their name and face on something and not even knowing really what the product was. Kylie and Kendall wrote a book and they didn't even seem to have read the book, never mind written it. In 2016, the book was released. It was called Rebels City of Indra and it could not be more obvious that they had no clue whatsoever what was going on in this book. Now we welcome one... <laughs> Guys, I'm the worst reader. Um... <laughs> There's a lot of videos on social media from people who saw or met them at book signings and apparently they were awful. They couldn't have been less interested in meeting the people that came and paid to meet them and were just on their phones the entire time. But these girls have been standing outside for hours. All you could see was Kendall and Kylie just like, ugh. like so not so exhausted, but just like stuck up on their phones looking down like people were like oh, you know like the first girl in line was like crying in tears you know and they were like as they walked into the store like like kylie was like ew you know like just kind of like to them and i was like oh my gosh you know as like the door shuts and they go into the nordstrom it's all glass doors they're looking at each other laughing laughing horrible like, what you know what i mean like how can you be such a fucking bitch laugh basically all these people that are here to get your autograph that you are being paid for and so I put a pin in that because you're going to see a theme forming one of the most blatant slap your face on something was when they literally just slapped their face on something. And that was when Kendall and Kylie decided that they would take images of legendary musicians and actually slap their faces and their pictures or screenshots over these legendary musicians. Of course, they didn't even seek permission from the artists or the families of the artists who'd passed away, and they were rightfully called out on social media by Biggie's family and by Sharon Osbourne. The sisters dropped a vintage t-shirt collection for their Kendall and Kylie line titled Rap vs. Rock. The t-shirts featured famous musician icons such as Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, Pink Floyd, Ozzy Osbourne, and Led Zeppelin, with the sisters' faces subtly imposed over the images. Musicians and family members of the late musicians quickly took action. Some even went as far as to take legal action. Notorious B.I.G.'s mother, Valletta Wallace, blasted the sisters via Twitter, saying that the disrespect of these girls to not even reach out to her or anyone connected to the estate baffles her. She said she had no idea why they feel they can exploit the passings of Tupac and her son, Christopher, to sell a t-shirt. The wife to Ozzy Osbourne also took to Twitter to express her disapproval, saying that they hadn't even earned the right to put their face with musical icons. She added that they should stick to what they know, which is lip gloss. Both the estate of Notorious B.I.G. and The Doors took legal action by issuing cease and desist letters to the sisters. The cease and desist letter requested that the sisters stop all action and if they fail to comply, then further legal actions would be taken. This is another story that you need to put a pin in because you're going to see even more stealing, copying, and slapping your face on things later on in the video. So while we're talking about Kylie and Kendall, let's talk about two of their biggest controversies. For Kendall, it's Pepsi, and for Kylie, it's Kylie Cosmetics. The Pepsi controversy is one of the most infamous 
In April 2017, Kendall Jenner was in a Pepsi commercial and it was one of the most tone deaf things the people of Earth have ever seen. It was so ridiculous that I wouldn't be surprised if it was outrage marketing, something that the Kardashians are very familiar with and we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. I'm sure most people have seen the video of the Pepsi commercial that they pulled very quickly, but in it, Kendall walks through a protest and goes up to a cop and hands him a Pepsi. And at that moment, Kendall solved all issues on earth, got rid of racism, and was a white savior to us all. The boys TV show actually just parodied the Pepsi commercial this week, the week that I'm making this. So go and check it out. The boys is really good and way better than any of this Kardashian crap. So go and watch that. Since when? Adrian. Black Lives Matter is my favorite hashtag. My Insta, nothing but black screens. Mm. So this is going to be a big category, Kylie Cosmetics, Kylie Swim, Kylie Baby, because they're all very similar and under the same umbrella and she made the same mistakes with them all. The first thing to say is Kylie has always talked about how she was really insecure about her lips. We all have things about ourselves we don't like, but she talks about her lips like no one has suffered like she has suffered. Don't get me wrong, I imagine that the amount of scrutiny and just people picking them apart and saying horrible things about them must be awful. Like there is an interview where Kylie said that the way people talk about her, they make you realize things about yourself that you like never would have noticed in a million years. And people are mean, Pe people are really mean. And I don't think that's necessarily called for like talking about their looks and stuff, but in a way they're the ones that kind of feed into it all because they're constantly talking about their looks. But at the end of the day, they have millions and millions of dollars, adoring fans, enormous houses, everything they could possibly want in the world. So my sort of sympathy only goes so far. So Kylie gets lip injections. We can talk about the other stuff later. And she also extensively, extensively edits and photoshops her photos. And then she tells every media outlet that she simply achieved all this dramatic change by just using makeup. And Kylie's targeted demographic is under 20. Of course they believed her that she was just overlining her lips. So in 2014, the company Kylie Lip Kits is created and like I said before, all these companies, they're created by other people and they just come in and slap their name and face on it. They're coming in and picking some really superficial stuff, a few colors, naming a few things. It's nothing groundbreaking. I mean, these people aren't exactly known for their intellect. I have a little surprise for you. And they do not seem to have any work ethic whatsoever, despite what they try and tell us. They do what's called glamour labor. They sit around for two hours and get their hair and makeup done and take a few pictures. They don't know what actual work is. And I'm gonna give you a little tutorial on how to take the perfect selfie. You know, I work so hard. We work a lot. I'm truly a workaholic. I work 24 seven, do the work and be authentic about it. What they do is called glamour labor. Their hard work is getting paid millions of dollars to post toxic products on Instagram. The hardest part of their work is picking a color for a makeup palette and then getting drunk on camera. To keep you hooked, they sell you their secrets to success so that one day you can be just like them. My tips for taking a great selfie. They spend millions on clothing and cosmetic surgeries, steal from other cultures, and then they sell low quality knockoffs to their fans. And they've leveraged this into billion dollar businesses. They've There's actually a comical tour of Kylie giving a tour of her office and she calls her office her closet. And then over here we have mine and my mom's closet, I mean closet, we have mine and my mom's office. 
and I'm sure she's come and done the photo shoots there and all the fun stuff, but she walks around the office like she's trying to desperately remember where she's going and what line someone's told her to say. So Kylie's team put together the lip kits and they launch this when Kylie's probably at her most popular ever. The lip kits apparently sold out, but I think they may have been using an old influencer tactic here. There's two courses they could have done. One is you order a tiny amount of products and it's very quick and easy to sell it out because you only have a handful of products on hand. Or this is what a lot of people do, is that they have some sort of sale, they're selling products or tickets and they put them up and then after a certain amount of time or a certain amount are sold, they close it down and say they're sold out even though they have plenty left. And then later down the road, they'll say, oh, we've got more tickets or more products and they'll put them back up. But now they're able to say, oh, you better get it quickly because it sold out last time. And they're just creating their own hype and manufacturing this sellout. And especially if you're a Kardashian launching a product, you're already rich. I mean, yes, you want to make money, but is it more important in the first run to generate publicity? Yes. And do you know how much publicity she got off those lip kits selling out? It was insane. Everyone was talking about it. So was that overall the better decision, of course, than selling a few more lip kits that you know, people are just going to spend the money and be gone. You can't pay for that sort of exposure. So the lip kit sold out and they changed the name from then to Kylie Cosmetics. As I hinted about earlier, another thing that the Kardashians seem to do a lot, and I mean a lot, is to steal and copy from small creators. And they seem to steal the most from black women. Kylie Cosmetics and Kylie Swim both seem to steal a lot from black female creators. And there was even a point where they hired some creators for a short period, got their designs and everything they needed, and then fired them a month later. Kylie and the Kardashians in general are able to do this because they have so much money. So if any of these small creators have something stolen and want to sue them, the Kardashians can tie the creators up in court forever. Small creators don't have the money to fight large lawsuits and generally they're settled out of court. Because if they steal from these talented people and the Kardashians make 50 million and they have to pay the creator 2 million in an out of court settlement, they still make a lot of money. And let's not act like Kylie's not known for like stealing inspo from other people. Like, like that whole blowout she had with Lala, like what, that was like less than two years ago. She literally stole and copied imagery from a not as well-known artist, but someone who's very popping. So my question was like, how long did she think she was gonna get away with that? Cause like Lada's kind of a big deal. Lada, I believe did sue her. Um, yeah, she was sued by Lada. She stole some imagery, was like inspi inspired, <laughs> inspired by her imagery and used it, Kylie had used it for her lip campaigns when she first came out. So I say all of that to say, I wouldn't put it past her. This is the sleeve that the concealer box comes in. I saw some side-by-side -side comparison of like Fenty's imagery compared to Kylie's imagery for her concealers. And I, I was like, ooh, when you look at it, when you look at it that way, I don't know if this is not looking too good for you. In 2019, Kylie sold majority stake in her company to Cody and gave up her CEO title. As I said before, I really don't think too much was going on there. I'm sure other people were running the show. At the height of Kylie Cosmetics, Kris Jenner had shown some financial documents and alleged tax returns to Fortune, which had Fortune conclude that Kylie Jenner was a self-made billionaire and none of those words are true. At the time, people had more issue with the self-made part because she absolutely is not self-made. If Kylie Jenner's self-made, then 
I can run the London Marathon by being dropped off in a golf car 10 meters before the finish line and crossing it first and saying I won. I'll talk more about this towards the end of the video. But when Cody bought the majority stake, they were able to see some numbers and that Chris Jenner had seriously fabricated what was going on. Chris Jenner and Kylie had lied to Forbes and the document they'd showed them was heavily doctored, even the tax returns. Jenner claimed the company was making 360 million but in reality it was 125 million. She also claimed Kylie Skin, another company under the Kylie umbrella, did 100 million in one month but it wasn't even close to doing 25 million in six months. And when Kylie turned 21, uh, even the bartenders at her birthday bash wore t-shirts that had her Forbes cover on it. When Kylie's cover debuted in July 2018, a reporter did have some doubts about the numbers her camp was claiming. But we were provided with proof in the form of tax returns that Kylie herself signed. Plus, analysts and industry experts verified what Kylie's camp was saying, that her business was doing at least $300 million in revenue every year. Well, we can't prove that those tax returns the Jenners set us were fake. We're pretty sure now that they were. Regardless, it's clear that for years the Jenners have been lying. In November, Kylie Jenner agreed to sell 51% of Kylie Cosmetics to Cody. In selling to a public company, details about her business have come out. The sale has laid bare one of the Jenner family's biggest secrets, which is Kylie Cosmetics is not nearly as big of a business or as successful of a business as they spent years leading the entire world, including Forbes, to believe. The numbers just don't add up. Kylie Jenner's camp led us to believe that the business had done $360 million in revenue in 2018. In reality, that number was only $125 million. Then there's the skincare line. They told us that the skincare line, which launched in May of 2019, had done 100 million uh, in revenue in just two months. In reality, it hadn't even done 25 million in six months. Kylie Skin was packed full of basic products that were grossly overpriced and Kylie didn't even seem to read the insert of her own products. People tore her apart online for the how-to videos that she did where she didn't even seem to know how to use her products and there was things that she was saying to do with the products that were just not what you were supposed to be doing. My walnut face scrub. I like to use it two to three times a week. It really is the secret recipe to soft, delicious Skin. Skin. She was saying to use a walnut scrub every day when dermatologists absolutely don't recommend that and there was also some social media promotion where she was washing her face with a face scrub and when she takes the towel away it's just like covered in makeup so you can see that the product didn't actually wash her face. Most people are aware that the Kardashians wouldn't use their own products. The products they use are in the thousands and thousands of dollar range, but it's important to remember that the majority of Kylie's fans are extremely young and many also have a parasocial relationship with Jenner, so many young fans will believe what she tells them. Kylie Swim also launched over the summer and it was the same sort of thing. People said that the fabric was really cheaply made and there was a lot of reviews on social media that you could even see the tag that said Kylie through the fabric of the swimming costume. And one thing you don't want your swimming costume to be is see-through. And now that the swimsuits have finally arrived, people are giving me honest reviews online and they're not impressed at all. I mean, the stitching and the materials used proves that this was really a half-assed job. Apparently, they are not only too small to cover anything, but they're also see-through. Amid the criticism, Kylie briefly limited her comment section on her personal Instagram page. Fans also feel that the remarks posted on the Kylie Swim page have been filtered to weed out all the negative reviews about the brand. While the Kylie Swim page is currently free of bad reviews, Twitter and TikTok are filled with negative remarks about the brand. There was also the usual, you know, stolen designs, as we know with the Kardashians, and it just seemed to be really poorly thought out. The swimsuits were released after summer and just other things that it just seemed like a really slap together promotion. Last year, Kendall Jenner released a new tequila company, 818. The brand was surrounded in controversy from the very beginning, with Kendall Jenner being accused of appropriating Mexican culture in the marketing materials for 818. The Kardashians and Jenners are notorious for stealing other cultures, especially, as I mentioned earlier, from black women. 
It wasn't just the ignorance about Mexican culture that got the tequila company in hot water. Another tequila company, 512, sued 818 for trademark infringement and alleged that the brand copied its logo and color scheme. When side by side, it's hard to argue, and also the 818 brand was accidentally substituted for 512 inside of Kim Kardashian's own app, Kim Kardashian Hollywood, showing just how similar they are. Also, just looking at the reviews online, apparently it is not a good tequila, and it gives you a really, really bad hangover. The reviews are pretty split 50-50 between five star and one star, but all of the five star reviews mention Kendall Jenner. So I think a lot of the five star reviews are more just her fans and not actually tequila drinkers. Another of Kendall's controversies, she's had a lot, is when Kendall became a spokesperson for Proactive. Prior to the release of Kendall joining Proactive, Chris, Kendall, and some of the other Kardashians put out multiple posts on social media talking about Kendall coming out. They basically used the very stressful, scary, and sometimes painful process of coming out as gay and used it to flog a face cream. I'm sure I don't need to say this by this point in the video, but Proactive is just another product the Kardashian Jenners endorsed but would never ever use themselves. She also had this super awful segment with Ellen where Ellen also tries to make the audience believe that she and Portia use Proactive. I'm sure they got paid an absolute fortune for that combined Working segment. Proactive, yes. and what uh, got you involved with Proactive? I've been struggling, I, I struggled with acne when I was really young and I've been struggling again um, sort of recently and so when everything came up with Proactive, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, just because um, it really does work. No, and I, I mean, see, we, we yeah, use it. Totally. And Good American is a clothing and denim company run by Khloe Kardashian. And again, I'm sure I don't have to say this, but the company is another example of, I'm sure she picked some colors and some designs, but they're a face and the business is run by other people. The one thing I will say is the clothing apparently is quite good, it's well made, it's size inclusive, and I looked at the website quite extensively, and if it wasn't a Kardashian website, I probably would have bought something. But Good American does seem to be another case of the Kardashians stealing from smaller creators and just making their own versions. One creator, Destiny Blue, did file a lawsuit against Good American for copying her designs. Chloe basically bought some of her designs and claimed that they were for personal use. And then a few months later, Good American launched products that looked very, very, very similar to Destiny's designs. Because on June 2nd, 2017, controversy struck again for the company when indie designer Destiny Blue alleged that Good American copied her designs and sold them under their brand name without compensating her for her designs. Blue took to Twitter and tweeted, when someone buys one of everything on your site, has you make them custom at Blue Dazzle work, never posts it or wears it, then copies it and tagged Chloe. She also posted pictures of Chloe wearing a sheer black bedazzled leotard beside a similar catsuit from her line. Chloe's team responded to the accusations with a cease and desist letter via Good American, claiming that under no circumstances had copying occurred and that the problem was being handled through legal procedures. Blue then provided Refinery29 with a copy of her June 8th response to Chloe Kardashian in Good American, which was full of correspondence that proved that the good American team has been in touch with her since November of 2016. The correspondence also showed that Kardashian's then stylist Monica Rose contacted Blue to borrow black and nude bodysuits and bras, which Blue claimed were later also knocked off by good Americans. In May 2020, Destiny Blue's company Blue Dazzled officially filed a lawsuit against good American, seeking damage repair of $10 million. By May of 2021, the two reached an agreement in private and both officially asked the court to close the case. There also was claims that Good American 
hired designers that they liked and they would have them sign a contract and start working there. They'd bleed them dry of lots of designs over the course of a month. And then once they'd got all their designs, they fired them. And Destiny actually ended up settling out of court for the lawsuit with Chloe. But you know, these small creators, they they don't have the money to go and spend all this time tied up in a lawsuit. The Kardashians can like drag that out because they have endless funds. Have you ever wondered what these are where there's a Kardashian surrounded by luxury bags? I mean, it just kind of seems sketchy, doesn't it? Well, it is. And have you ever come across an Instagram account where the person has like a million followers but you've never heard of them and can't really pinpoint how they'd have a million followers? Well, these two things are one and the same because these bag pictures are how some of these people get their huge amounts of followers. Basically, if you look at one of these ads, the Kardashian or influencer is sitting with all the bags and it will always say something like, go and follow all the accounts that Scott Disick is following and there'll be, you know, 60 to 90 accounts and you have to go and follow all of them and comment and that's how you get entered into the draw to win the bags. Well, all of those 60 to 90 people that you go and follow, they have all paid to be there. And the fees to be one of those people is between ten and fifty thousand dollars. I've even heard of some higher ones. And I think it's kind of ludicrous that people do this because it's such a temporary growth of your following. I mean, it's so detrimental to your following anyway, because it makes it so obvious that you've like bought followers because your likes are you know like a hundred likes on a picture and you've got a million followers like that looks super suspicious but if you think about how much money is being generated from those like think about 60 accounts that are all paying 20 grand that's on the lower side that's 1.2 million like off you know one posting they pay the kardashian like 250 say the bags are 50,000 they've made all that profit like it's it's pretty insane apparently most of the companies do fulfill like the prize like people do get the bags but there is some like sketchiness around it like I've seen people win the bags but then you go back on their Instagram and they had one of the bags like a month ago it it, it just sometimes doesn't line up well or they won the bags and then they have the bags the next day but it just all seems a bit strange and I mean if this just isn't more proof that the Kardashians just see their following as literal currency then I don't know what else does. So the first app that Kim launched was Kim Kardashian Hollywood and this app has generated north of 200 million dollars for her. The rest of the family then obviously saw this cash grab and opened apps of their own. These apps were supposed to give behind the scenes and, you know, secret info that you couldn't just get from their show or the hundreds of other places that you can follow. I'm going to show you guys something that Kim taught me. I think we were like seven and eight. How to eat a Kit Kat and it's pretty life-changing. First of all, it makes you eat less because you're eating it so slow. It's kind of melted. And yeah, there was some really great content on here. A lot of people who worked on these apps have spoken out about the work conditions, saying they were paid so poorly that several times they had to call out sick because they could not afford to put gas in their car to go to work. They also spoke out about the crazy 60 to 80 hour work weeks and how they're expected to be on constant call and even spend their Christmas uploading all of Kim's Christmas presents to her app. All of the apps were initially free, but basically once you downloaded them, you immediately had to start spending money to get any sort of content. All of the sisters shut down their apps by 2019, I'm guessing because they couldn't find people to pay minimum wage to keep up this sort of work and content production. 
The Kardashians wanted to expand their digital deceptions and made the venture into crypto scams. In January of this year, Kim, along with a bunch of other celebrities, was sued by the investors of Ethereum Max Crypto. It was a pump and dump scheme. They had no tie to Ethereum whatsoever, and people lost a lot of money. I can definitely see the Kardashians going more into the crypto sphere because it is one of those things when it's, you know, obviously a pump and dump that these people who are very morally bankrupt will go in and push it and then just get a big paycheck and bounce. Kim has a brand called Skims that generally has pretty good reviews and people say, you know, the products are well made also, but this company was at first called Kimono, which obviously people had huge issues with that. I think that there was absolutely no intention of this being the real name of the company. I think this is just yet another instance of outrage marketing, what the Kardashians do best, where they kind of get people talking about them, people who love them will talk about them no matter what, and then people who hate them will talk about things like that. So they're just always being talked about whether for good or bad it's like the old saying there's no such thing as bad publicity along with good american and skims the kardashians have had a plethora of stores dash smooch and courtney also runs some online knockoff goop poosh these stores seem to be a background aesthetic for their shows and anyone who visited them said they were filled with overpriced cheap fast fashion clothes, along with $10 Kardashian water bottles, which is ironic because despite having one of the largest carbon footprints on the planet, the Kardashians are constantly seen with plastic water bottles. I mean the minimum effort to use a reusable one, and they can't even do that. When you look at the reviews for Dash and their other stores, most people said they were extremely dirty and full of unhelpful stuff. The only Kardashian store that I know of is they're one they have in Vegas where they sell their used Kardashian closet items, but they have had a history of different stores. The biggest one being Dash Boutique. They opened the first one in 2006. At one point there was three of them, but all three of them were gone come 2018. These Dash Boutiques sold clothing and accessories that I guess were probably supposed to be handpicked by the Kardashian sisters. Danielle, let's take a picture of this sign. Look, the quick trim. I like it though. Hey look, they have the perfume, the perfume. Oh look, they have the Shirts. I want to buy the shirt. These are silly bands. And the most information I could find about it was the sisters simply moved on and wanted to do something new. The Yelp reviews tell a different story that maybe business wasn't going so well. Let's just take a look. The store is like an overpriced Forever 21 with ugly socks. <laughs> Myra says the store has a security guard standing in front of the store. Guarding what? Ridiculously ugly overpriced clothes. <laughs> Lots of complaints about how dirty the store was itself and some not so great comments about the people that worked there either. This is probably my favorite one. Arlene says, the only thing I liked about this store was its name, Dash, because the only thing I wanted to do was dash out of the store. <laughs> Oh no. Around the same time that the Dash boutiques were going up, the Kardashian family opened another store called Kardashian Chaos. It was a glam shop that showcased souvenirs, apparel, and cosmetics that pay tribute to the famous Kardashians. It was located at the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas, and it's exactly what it sounds like. T-shirts, mugs, jewelry, some of their collaborations with brands. That store only lasted a few years. One thing that was not outrage marketing, but just had people outraged, was the Kardashians' response to COVID-19. The Kardashians did what a lot of celebrities did, acted as, we're all in this together, guys, when they're in their mansions with more than what they need, protected in a bubble, while real people were out there working and in some cases risking their own lives. The Kardashians proved their absolute ignorance to the world around them when not only did they literally go and party during the pandemic, but they did it in a private dream world. And then they bragged about it on social media. They've always perfectly walked the line between like unattainable wealth and oh snap, she just like me. But oh my gosh, they did not just blur that line during quarantine. They erased it. So Mrs. Kardashian West decided to flex her birthday party. I mean, having a party during a pandemic is 
You see where I'm going with this. But you see, hers was okay because it was actually on a private island where she administered COVID tests to everyone beforehand. After two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip where we could pretend things were normal for just a brief moment in time. She then goes on to describe her birthday party, which despite happening on an island, appears to have been drier than the Sahara Desert. She then ends it with, I realize that for most people, this is something that is so far out of reach right now so in moments like these i'm humbly reminded of how privileged my life is hashtag this is forced so obviously like literally everyone hated that she actually got ratioed by somebody telling her to read the room she was kind of getting ratioed left and right but what i found interesting was her getting ratioed by a normal person losing pay dealing with unemployment missing government checks new child care responsibilities these things are more relatable than a private island trip. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Literally any normal person could have told you this, but I guess Kim K had to get the point some kind of way. Nobody was mad at her for being rich enough to live in an actual private fantasy world where COVID-19 doesn't exist. But I think everyone was kind of mad at her for sharing that and somehow thinking that was an appropriate choice. I will say so. that ever since the pandemic and these sort of responses to the Kardashians, I have noticed a change in how people view them. My point is, before COVID, you know, this wealth gap basically meant, oh, Kim K can afford a Louis Vuitton bag and you can. not And people are open to that message for some reason. But now this wealth gap means Kim Kardashian can afford to keep her family safe from COVID-19 and live with the same comfort level that she had before and you cannot. That's not like an aspirational thing to share with people anymore. It's now antagonistic. You would have to have like a severe lack of awareness to not realize that. But what do we expect from the Kardashian genders if not a severe lack of I awareness? I think the Kardashians have noticed this marked cold shoulder that the public has towards them now especially with the world being in such turmoil. The cost of living is skyrocketing, millions died in the pandemic, guns have more rights than women, and the Supreme Court just took away a woman's autonomy over her own body. Of course, the Kardashians still have lots of supporters, but I've noticed a change in how they're marketing themselves. Before, they acted like they were royalty, super flashy and living an unattainable life. Now, Kim's dating Pete Davidson, who comes across as way more down to earth than Kanye. And on their social media and on their TV show, it has them going to Target, going in a car wash, and shock horror doing their own grocery shopping. A definite mark change from years past. As, well, as the billionaire enjoyed a stroll through the store with daughter Chicago. Kim shared the event on her Instagram stories and captioned it, dreams do come true. Love a target day with my shy shy. The mother daughter also ran into cousin True and auntie Chloe. Also, maybe even suspiciously, on a normal person outing. I just think when I'm pregnant, I just want to feel really normal. And just what do those normal things entail, you might wonder? Well, for the Car Jenners, it's going to the grocery store. Something that Kris Jenner admitted she had not done in two, that's right, two years. Kris tells the camera that the main reason why she hasn't shopped for her own groceries in so long is privacy, or rather the lack of whenever the family is seen out in public. As it turns out, the trip turned into an ecstatic experience for the mother-daughter duo, as things like pushing a shopping cart, spotting tater tots, and inserting their credit card into a chip reader was, as they put it, so fun. By the way, Kris didn't know how to use the chip reader. Womp Womp, and beamed proudly as Kylie returned a shopping cart to its rightful place. You're doing amazing, sweetie. The comments. One thing that goes hand in hand with the Kardashians is photoshopping, aesthetics, and plastic surgery. The hypocrisy of telling people their bodies and looks are down to makeup and gimmicky products is astounding. They have access to every product and treatment on the planet and wouldn't be caught dead using any of their own products. All the images that go out are extensively photoshopped. They themselves work with the paparazzi to take the pictures. They even pick the shots and make sure all of the photoshopping is complete. If any images are taken and released without their consent and without photoshopping, an entire team of people tries to scrub the image from the internet. Kylie Jenner told people her lips were from overlining her lips, and of course, younger people who don't know any better believed her. People also don't give enough credit to good lighting. I'm a tiny YouTuber, my two channels have like 20,000 subs total, and 
I have obviously lighting in my little studio here. You know, my lighting was probably $500 altogether and my camera was about $600 and it has a skin smoothing filter thing on it. These Kardashians are so rich. They're, the cameras that they're filmed on are thousands and tens of thousands of dollars and the lighting that they have is absolutely amazing. So if you even look at the earlier days of the Keeping Up with the Kardashian show and the Kardashians now, the skin smoothing filters that they're using is gone into overdrive. I mean, I know camera quality has improved, but it looks like they're being lit and shot in like heaven or something. They also use tons of body and face slimming filters. There's so many other things too, like professional makeup, professional hair. They have the best makeup and skin products in the world. Top dermatologists and treatment, private chefs, personal trainers, and everything else. They are so wrapped up in putting out this perfect image to the world that they are photoshopping their own children. I can you imagine? And these kids are really young. Can you imagine if you were a kid and later when you get older seeing that your parents had photoshopped you? And also I will never talk about anybody's kids on any of my channels and I think it's so gross that so many people say so many horrible things about their kids. The kids should be completely off the table, like just leave them alone. They also claim they have no plastic surgery, which is just not true. Kylie really puts this, you know, spin on, oh, I have temporary fillers. Well, most fillers are temporary. And she, you know, lied for a long time about having lip fillers when anyone with eyes could tell you that she had lip fillers. I work in the medical industry and I have done aesthetics for a long time. I can inject Botox, lip filler, all that stuff. So I definitely can see when, when people have had that done. They are full of Botox fillers, CO2 treatments, IPL. They have stuff like VeloShape and Cool Sculpting. And there is no way they haven't had plastic surgery. Kylie Jenner hid an entire pregnancy. I think they could hide for a few weeks while they recover from plastic surgery. They perpetuate this beauty standard that they themselves, with all the money and resources in the world, can't obtain. I have a theory. A theory that in order to be rich, and I mean mega rich, like billionaire, multi, multi, multi millionaire, I'm not talking someone who makes 100k a year or even a million a year because let's be honest in this day and age with gas prices and inflation a million dollars isn't a lot of money anymore i'm talking people who are like flying private jets and like multiple flashy cars and have insane disposable income that sort of level of rich I think that in order to become that type of rich, you have to be one, incredibly lucky or right time, right place, born into it, a nepotism baby or very connected family. The other half of the equation is that you have to be extremely, extremely self-centered. You have to screw people over. You have to hurt people, be it financially, have them living in poor conditions, you have to be willing to turn a blind eye to exploitation. You have to be unbelievably selfish and you have to actively be willing to not only poorly pay your staff, but to abuse your power. And on top of that, you have to have some sort of public profile, become a celebrity so that you can screw over and manipulate your audience and scam them just so you can add more millions to your already millions. These people think that they got their asses up and worked and worked harder than all the rest of us. And no, Kim, working at your dad's record company wasn't work, but they didn't work harder than the rest of us. They won a rigged game. You have to think of business and work as a game and the world as an arcade. So imagine three families walk into this arcade. There's the Kardashians, the rich family, 
there's the middle class family and there's a poor family the kardashians go in and there's tons of games and there's a basketball game and their kids want to win the best prize there and the kardashians be it robert chris caitlin they can stand there all day and have their kids take shots at the basketball game until all six of the kids win the best prize they can stand there for 10 hours until they all get there because they have the money to pay for all the shots they want to take then the middle class family their kids come in they want to win the best prize too but they have two kids and they can only afford to give each kid one shot and if they miss that's it they're out of the game but the poor family they can't afford to take any shots and actually their kids are the ones that are working the game the kardashians and nepotism babies all claim they're self-made and okay they've achieved something they have a successful business but those successful businesses are in a sea of garbage they're coming out of the arcade saying i won and just leaving out the insane amount of chances they got because anyone who has rich parents would be able to achieve at least some level of success middle class kids maybe get one shot at the arcade and few will make it and the poor kids they're the ones working at the arcade the kardashians literally have the world rigged in their favor but they can't just be happy with being absolutely loaded and earning millions upon millions having adoring fans, having one of the cushiest and best lives on the planet, they're greedy and they always want more. They aren't satisfied with a hundred million, they want hundreds of millions. And the only way to do it is to scam, cheat, lie and manipulate their loyalist fans. And they also want to sell those fans, their most powerful ally, self-consciousness. The money is built on the blood and tears of young women who believe in them, who follow them, who look up to them like the big sister they never had. It's just, it's so upsetting. It feels like such a betrayal against women. The Kardashians perfected, manipulated, and monetized the concept of being famous for being famous. The Kardashians and Jenners perpetuate a beauty standard that they themselves can't obtain even with their army of people that work for them and access to every purchasable on the planet. I was one of the last generations who grew up without social media and I'm so thankful that I did. Facebook was invented when I was a junior in high school and I can't imagine what it's like growing up with social media. I would hate to be a teen today, living through your phone and your worth is determined by how well you curate your Instagram feed. The Kardashians have over a billion people following them on social media, yet you won't find their kids on there. Bill Gates and Steve Jobs raise their kids without social media as well. One thing people don't talk about much is the power that they hold. Brands can live and die by the Kardashian's opinion. Some young people blindly follow them and accept their opinion on what to wear, what to eat, and when the decisions get bigger, like who to vote for and what to do with your life, we really should take a step back and think, should these people who are literally the epitome of the seven sins be holding so much power? There's so many other things I could have mentioned in this video. Kim scamming Brandy's mom, Poosh, Smoosh, Dash, Chris's talk show, Rob Kardashian, the Sears collection, Chroma Beauty, Kardashian Beauty, but there's just so much. I maybe can do a part two if people would be interested in hearing the other stuff, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you made it to the end, put MVP in the comments because seriously, you are the MVP if you made it to the end of this video. Make sure you're following me on social media to stay up to date with everything and check out my main channel if you're looking for some tv commentary as always make sure to stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one bye guys